Before I start, uh, I would like to thank the organizers of this beautiful event. This is the first time this event is here, but I think that the, the subject of the event is quite important and it will get more and more importance in the coming years. So this will be a hot topic, not only in Europe, but worldwide. And I thank you for the opportunity to present here and uh, thanks for your time. Uh, I'll, I have more or less half an hour, but if you have questions during the presentation, please don't hesitate. Before I start the presentation, I would like to remind that I am a real estate agent. We have a group of companies that are based in Nice, France. We are dealing with residential properties in French Riviera, and we are helping our clients to get residence in France. But today's presentation is not about that. Um, representing the International Real Estate Federation Worldwide, which is called FIAPC, existing in 66 countries. And the aim of this presentation is to provide uh, a survey comparative analysis of residential programs existing worldwide and try to compare to understand what's going on in the world. So this is not an advertisement of any specific program. This is not a legal advice where to invest to how to do. But this is more uh, a specific focus of these residential programs through investing in real estate. There are many, many ways you heard a lot how to get the residency, but this is mostly focused on real estate. So that is why uh, what I would like to speak about is to explain what's going on in real estate market worldwide, try to convince you that this is a good place to invest. Then I will try to compare the residency programs worldwide and especially focus of Europe because since few years it's becoming a really hot topic. And then at the end, I'll try to make some predictions what is the nearest and average future of real estate worldwide, so you will be more convinced to invest in real estate. Uh, I'd like to present some indices that are global indices worldwide. If you can see from 2008 up to 2013, the index of global house price index was decreasing, but we are seeing already three, three and a half years moderate and moderate recovery. This is the global house price index worldwide. And the data is from IFC and many other publicly available sources for uh, around 99 countries worldwide. And the, uh, the data are taken the latest possible available or the first quarter or the last quarter of 2016. What's going on with real house prices worldwide? I tried to put some countries analysis, but uh, if you cannot see any of them, uh, I'll be happy to enlarge and explain. But uh, mostly the real house prices increased over the past year. This is just an indice of 2016. And again, the data is the first quarter of 2017 or the latest possible. Because sometimes it's not possible to get uh, the most updated statistics from some countries. The data I took is from global, I mean, publicly available sources, IMF, uh, OECD, or European Central Bank, or national sources. As you can see, on the left side, we have Brazil, Ukraine, Russia, Qatar, Kazakhstan, while we are having Serbia, Iceland, Philippines, Hong Kong, New Zealand. These are the countries that you will see having quite interesting uh, uh, situation in their real estates, both sides, either positive or negative. And if you look at the real credit growth, which is one of the most important indices to understand the real estate world in a country, you see that on the left side we see again the Ukraine, Brazil, Ireland, Greece, and Russia again is appearing, while on the right side we have still Hong Kong, the Philippines, Turkey, and Slovak Republic are quite interesting to understand what's going on there, considering the overall political and economic situation there. Uh, the overall impact of real estate, the index of real credit growth over the past year is mostly strong, which is still good result and a uh, uh, good factor to think about investing in those countries. 
House price to income ratio. This is one of the few ratios that are talking about the situation in the real estate. As you can see, the prices increased faster than income in some countries. And on the left side, you see New Zealand, Austria, Sweden, Luxembourg, Switzerland. While on the right side, again, you see the Spain, Italy, Slovenia, Greece, and Hungary. These are the countries that I included uh, in my presentation to talk about the residential programs. So you will, you will see those countries appearing in the list when I will be comparing. And the last one, house price to rent ratio, which is quite interesting issue for the investors when they are thinking where to invest and what to get from. On the left side, we see that, I mean, overall the prices have grown faster than rents, mostly, uh, in the bench of countries I put here. Uh, on the right side, you still see Russia and uh, Baltic countries, Lithuania, Estonia, Greece in Spain and Italy are still there. While on the left side, Colombia, Canada, New Zealand, Sweden, and Turkey is here with Luxembourg is quite interesting. Uh, I, will, I will not go into the details in all these indices to explain what's going on because it might be not that much interesting for everyone, but if you would have questions, I'm happy to discuss. Uh, just a few slides to explain the real estate investments in Europe, European countries. This is the global analysis, and last year we see I mean, traditionally in Europe, there are three countries that are attracting the most real estate investments from worldwide. It is the UK, Germany, and France. This is the top three for many years. And the UK, we had 66 billion, Germany 54, and France 28. But these are followed by Sweden, Spain, and Netherlands. These are the second tier of top three. Uh, which are traditionally becoming, I mean, they are more or less keeping their status for over the years. If I compare this one with the previous year, you see that we have different numbers, but the order is the same. So the UK is the same, the leader, followed by Germany and France, and then goes Sweden, Spain, and Netherlands. Uh, put your attention that even if in the last year we had 66 for the UK, 66 billion investments in real estate. In 2015, we had 91 billion. This is increasingly, I mean, in, uh, there are some explanations I will give, but look at the year before, 2014. It was 47 billion only, like half, 100% like increase for one year in the UK. I mean, it is not in only UK, it's European, top three countries, UK, Germany, and France. They increased, they attracted almost as much investment as they were attracting usually. But the thing is that if you try to explain this data, you, tr you should understand the specificity of these countries. When we are saying the UK attracted this much, doesn't mean that all the UK attracted equivalent quality, uh, quantity of investments. The thing is that if you look at the cities, most active city markets in Europe, you will see that the, traditionally the London and Great London area is the leader, as always, which is attracting around one-third of all the investments into the UK. Can you see this? Then Paris, Great Paris area, is the second leader, traditionally it was second one, which is attracting one-third of all the investments in real estate that goes to France. So in France, there are three focus points. Great Paris area, French Riviera, and the rest of France. Either of them are one-third, one-third, one-third. So in, in this area, Nice, Cannes, and up to Saint-Tropez, are as much as the, uh, by quantity of billion of euros goes to Paris. But if you look at the quantity, then we have almost two times more quantity sold in this area than in Paris. Because in Paris, they are buying mostly in the central area, a building cost maybe 15 or 20 villas or 50 apartments if you buy here. 
Then uh, look at the Germany. In the case of Germany compared to UK and France, is quite interesting because they do not have one or two attractive focus points. They have four. There are four cities, Berlin, Hamburg, Munich, and Frankfurt. These are four cities that are attracting all the investments, almost that, I mean, one third of investment that goes to real estate in Germany. And these are traditionally competing with each other. While if you see the same statistics for the year of 2014, you see that Berlin became even more attractive than Paris. This was the first time in the history, and I really congratulate them. This was because of the comparatively cheaper real estate compared to rental income. The people were started to invest mostly, uh, let's say, Russia-speaking world, who was more or less aware of the situation of Germany and the mentality they understand. They started to invest in this uh, real estate to get income. I met some clients who even bought apartments without visiting Berlin because the apartment was costing like 50,000 euro or 60,000 euro, and they had a contact who was selling these properties. They just trusted them and invested a few hundred thousand euros to get these apartments to rent out for them, which you cannot do, for example, in southern France because you have to invest a bit more considerable amount of quantity. And the last part, the, the same statistics for 2014, again shows the same order, and again shows the same proportion. So the UK, which is the leader, almost 45% always goes to Great London area. France, only one third goes to Paris, the other one third French Riviera. And Germany is divided by four focus points. It's quite interesting to see Moscow as the fourth one. It was because of devaluation and uh, devaluation and foreign investors started to invest more to get cheaper real estate for rent. Because at that period and until now, in Moscow especially, the investment for rental income is quite interesting. I don't want to talk about riskiness of these investments, but the reality is that, I mean, if you invest in French Riviera and you would like to get higher income, hardly you will get more than 2 3% net. But if you invest in Moscow, you would like to get uh, higher income, you can get even 10 20 30% sometimes. Depend which kind of property in the, which area. So this is about real estate worldwide, what's going on. But let's try to understand, let's come to our topic. Let's try to understand what is the investment for residency. What is the residency? When I, when I try to understand what is the residency, it's just the act of establishing or maintaining a residence in a given place. It doesn't say anything. But this is a concept, which is global concept, and it includes a lot of things inside. All the rights, responsibilities, and everything given to a person when you are changing your residence. Sometimes they are so extreme that you can change almost most of the things you were used to do in your earlier residence. So let's try to understand why they are changing the residence. I mean, what are the reasons? The reasons are plenty. I just named few. You can add maybe two times more. These are political and economic stability climate, tribal freedom, standards of living, healthcare system, living costs and general infrastructure, reunification with family or dependents, education system, and so on and so on. But there, which are more interesting for us, are business-related criteria. These are business incorporation benefits, in particular real estate investments and estate planning, banking insurance of all financial system of the country or taxation system and the overall cost also for obtaining a citizenship which is also quite interesting and you heard a lot but I am, will be considering only in the residential programs and not citizenship programs because citizenship programs are few uh, while residency programs are more and quite interesting especially in Europe how to get new residency 
I mean, you are sitting in a country, you are thinking to move somewhere else, you can apply of plenty of type of visas to get, uh, for example, representative or employment visas, needed skills, volunteer, migration, humanitarian visas, political refugee, it's also retirement visas, students, other categories, but most, most importantly, again, investment visas. How to get investment visa? There are not many ways. Either you should invest in a special fund or in a government fund that gives you opportunity to reside in a country, or you invest in a business or create new business in order to create new jobs. Usually these are, uh, if you are investing in a company or creating a new company, you should get at least 10 employments, new employments, or maintain the existing ones. And uh, investing in a real estate. This is the issue that I'm more interested in, and I'm going to talk about this finally. Investment in real estate in order to get residency is not new in the world. It has been existing for many years, for decades. But this was mostly in uh, some islands that are considered as offshores, that were attracting clients to invest there, to get uh, the citizenship or per residency, to give some rights. Because they were mostly ex-colonies of a country, so their passports were giving opportunity to travel a lot, and, and so on and so forth. But it appeared in Europe only recently, like a few years ago, and European countries understood this opportunity and trying to set up such kind of programs to attract mostly foreign clients. Uh, actually, European governments, starting from Latvia, example, which was a pioneer in Europe and set up incredibly low uh, barrier to get the residency. It was around 140,000 euro in Riga and 70,000 euro outside of Riga. So if you buy 70,000 euro, you are getting right away almost European citizenship, uh, European, sorry, European residency, which means that you are completely free to travel throughout Europe. And after five years, you could get a citizenship of Europe. This was incredible opportunity for mostly for Russians, let's say, which were the first clients, and around 12,000 out of 12,000, 9,000 from Moscow almost, invested in this program. But I will come back to Latvia example. The thing is that the investors, the, the European countries that understood that there is such an opportunity, started to set up these programs and started to compete to each other. There are some lawyers in the room, they would understand my example that I'm going to give now just to explain the phenomenon. End of 19th century, beginning of 20th century, there was a deficit in the budget, as usual, for states in the United States. So the governments were thinking what to do, how to attract or how to invent new tax, not to bother the society and not to have problems with uh, elections. They thought that they might in attract corporations and somehow tax these corporations. So they invented so-called franchise tax system, which means that if a corporation is incorporated somewhere, independently where is the headquarter, if it is incorporated in a state, we could ask for a small fee, which is just not considering beef a very big bond for a big corporation, so a bit from each other, we will have something. Historically, Delaware State, which is one of the smallest states of the United States, is attracting around 75% of all the largest corporations incorporated in the United States. And the franchise fees coming from these corporations are really considerable for the budget of this state. It's almost 100 years Delaware is the leader and is keeping and will be keeping the leadership to attract corporations and to get fees. So they invented a vehicle to get some money without bothering the electorate. Of course, it was not the only one who were that smart. All the other states almost tried to get the same thing. They started to invent all kinds of attractive issues. They changed their laws. The, some states even exactly copied the laws 
of the lever, but it didn't work. So follow the parenthesis, follow the example of Latvia. Some European states thought, uh huh, we found an example, let's do the same. And they started to put new programs with 500,000K. You invest somewhere, you get the residency. 400, 300. So all the European states, almost 14 states, started to compete with each other to decrease this amount to attract more and more foreign investors. This phenomenon is called race to the bottom in the legal literature, which means that they are competing with each other, which decreases, I mean, push down the floor. But from one hand, if you are a country, if you are sitting in a government of a country, you are thinking, why not to do this? We are decreasing f up to 500, 400, 300. We are attracting a lot of investors. They are coming, they are becoming new taxpayers. They are spending a lot of money. They are bringing a lot of new clients. And we are getting a lot of taxes without giving harm to our investors local investors, and uh, we are not taxing them. We are getting some money from outside. We are doing only good thing. On the other hand, for investors outside of Europe, they are investing in Europe. They are getting a lot of advantages. They are coming to that place. They are becoming residents. Sometimes they are using this residency to invest in another country, because otherwise they could have not be considered as European investor and they couldn't get, for example, the credit or mortgage loan or something. So they are becoming European investor and investing in another country. So as you look from this side, everything is brilliant. Well, all the solutions are done. Everyone is happy. Everyone at least should be happy. But there is a trade-off. The trade-off is that there are, this phenomenon existed earlier before, before Europe started to use this technique. And there were, in the academic literature even, there were some analyses that were uh, saying that these kind of programs are somehow harmful. You should be very, very carefully considering before starting such a program in a country. And to be honest, there are no uh, worldwide comparative analyses exactly based on this phenomenon because, yes, it was existing before, but in Europe it's new. And it's very difficult to get all these uh, advantages. I couldn't even find, for example, a justification program of a government really justifying that we need this program and we need 500,000, for example, to put this, or 400,000. There is no such justification. They're just, just trying to get to understand. For example, Latvia started with 140,000 and 70,000. They understood that they are losing a lot of money, let's say. They jumped to 250,000 now. But this is, you are trying to understand how it works. But since there are no statistical data, they cannot really justify uh, from an economic point of view if it is good or bad. The critics of this phenomenon said that uh, these are somehow harmful. You should be very careful. You should check all the origins of the funds. These international investors are coming because even if they are transferring from a, a bank that is not under strict regulation as European banks, we should check how the money appeared in the bank. So it's all system. And as an example, they say, see, Granada, Belize, Ireland, and other countries, for example, they, they had such programs and they canceled. So it means that there is something wrong. You, you should be considering very, very carefully. For example, Hungary started, uh, stopped their program 31st of March of 2017. I uh, will be now talking to about a few countries that I selected, mostly in Europe, to understand how they uh, attract, what they offer. The first example I gave you, starting from uh, 1st of September of 2014, Latvia, that was the pioneer in Europe, and they set up 140,000 in Riga and 70,000 outside of Riga, they increased up to 250,000. The thing is that I'll give you an example. What happened with this? Why people started to criticize? Latvian investors started to criticize. You would say, why should they do this? 
I mean, they are not taxed. They are getting new investors from outside. What is the harm? The thing is that once they set up, for example, 140,000 investment in Riga to get residency, international investors were trying to buy something to get residency. And the demand increased so much that the prices of, for example, one bedroom apartment in central of Riga, which was around 70, 80,000, jumped to 140,000. Because minimum, you need one uh, apartment. You can, we could buy even a studio. It was enough to get residency. The price of studio increased so much that local investors, they, they lost understanding what's going on. I mean, they could buy a studio for 70, 80,000. Now they should pay 140. So they, they started to say, I mean, it's not fair. You are, they are doing good thing from what side, attracting foreign investors, but locals are lost. I mean, we are losing around 30, 40, 50%. It's not fair. Followed by Latvia, some, many other countries started to put uh, into the progress of their programs of residency. And since I'm reminded that I have a few minutes left, I should, I should go a bit quick, but I will be happy to answer to all your questions regarding this presentation later on. Just an example, what happened in Greece? These are data of April 30th, 2017. They attracted 1,684 foreign investors who invested in real estate to get residency. Uh, who are these guys? You guess? 46% are from China. I don't believe that any of them speak Greece, uh, Greek, but uh, neither Russians. They don't speak. But it's a cheap way to invest in a beautiful country, fantastic weather, resorts, beaches, and then you are getting residency, European residency. You are completely free to move. It's because Chinese and Russians are particularly difficulties to, to receive visa each time, to apply for a visa, to collect all these documents. So you are investing, you have your residence home, you are you're coming for vacations, and you are completely free. Let's see what happens in Malta, Bulgaria, Portugal. I mean, I, you heard about all these countries a lot of times with all the details, so I am not going to stop in each case. But just to show, for example, the result of the program in Portugal. Since 2012, at end of October of 2012, they started this program. In 2012, they received two, and these are the countries up to uh, the years, sorry, up to 2017, the last details. They received 5,243 requests from investors. Uh, getting residency through investing in real estate. And these were adopted. I mean, there are already 5,243, uh, and these are the family members of these guys. And they brought around 3 billion euros into the economy of, I, I mean, into the real estate of this country. You should agree that this is considerable amount. And if you would like to know where this capital came from, look at here. China, 3,472 investors from China. So China is flooding European countries where the investment is cheap. <clears throat> the country is beautiful. They right away, they are getting residency quickly and having their vacation. If we go to Italy, Ireland, and Spain, just one qu uh, the issue concerning Italy. Italy is one of the countries that has such a program and doesn't have, which means that you can get a residency in Italy, but there is no minimal requirement. I mean, all depends on the mood of the officer, probably, uh, who is looking at your papers. If you show that you rented the place and you have some money to leave and you don't care about uh, Italy, I mean, state aid, something, he could, get, he could give you a residency. If you buy a villa, you say, I'm a rich guy, you right away you will get it, for sure. But there is no exact strict regulation. I was talking to our guys as well, who we presented yesterday, the Italian case. I mean, nothing is specified there. All depends on the weather, the mood, and the coffee was OK, and etc. The Golden Visa program results of Spain. This is also interesting. See, capitals invested and investors, Chinese, 
200, 702 investors invested around half a billion euro in this country, followed by Russians. Mostly they invested in Barcelona, but the thing is that, again, these are two main countries that are investing in European programs. Mostly these countries, because Russians somehow know these countries, Chinese are discovering these countries. They are not investing in France, for example, because it's a bit more complicated, because it's not, they do not have large communities. Chinese are going somewhere where they have already community to speak to their language, to understand what's going on. I will come back to this if you want. There are I mean, plenty of offshore residences that uh, you, you can get even direct citizenship investing in real estate. I don't want to go through all this because probably I do not have any time. I mean, EB-5 visas are well known. There are some representatives here who are doing EB-5s. I just want to stress once again who are applies for EB-5. Traditionally, 95% are from China and Hong Kong, let's say. Huh? And the thing is that uh, four years ago, the limit of uh, residency, the green card, let's say, AB5, which is 10,000 per year, first time in 2003, they jumped over the limit. And currently, there are so much requests that around 75,000 applications are pending. So there is eight years to work until to understand how to do what to do. I guess they will increase somehow the limits and uh, let's pass this part. One, one thing that I like a lot, this is the study about re European real estate. UK and the rest of Europe. The impact of Brexit. This is not uh, a legal study, this is just a survey of institutional and important investors try to understand what they think that would be after the Brexit. See, real estate investments in the UK, around 92% thinks that it will decrease. And while they almost think that in Europe it will increase. So they think that instead of UK, it will go to Europe. Real estate values in UK, again, 89% think that it will decrease while uh, some of them think that it will increase in the rest of Europe. But the thing is that, see, there are 3% here and 2% here who are thinking that it's completely vice versa. It, it, they think that after the Brexit, the investments in real estate in the UK would increase. So I think uh, after a very short period, we would understand these are the future billionaires or complete losers. But uh, it's quite interesting to see such kind of statistics. And I would like to hear your uh, opinion on this as well. Yes, please. I think they think in British terms. Sorry. Understood. No, but uh, even in that case, even in that case, the, the image doesn't change much. Even in that case, the image doesn't change much. I do not have much time. I'm going, I mean, these are just predictions what is going to be in the nearest uh, few years up to 2020 in worldwide markets, just to show that real estate market is a considerable part of our investment uh, agenda. And we should consider really seriously investing in real estate, even if you are going to get a residency. Better to go through this way, because it's more interesting than just to invest in a fund, probably. I'm uh, running out of my time. And at the end, just I will finish here. Uh, since I'm representing International Real Estate Federation, uh, and I'm here not to advertise any program or any commercial property or any company, this is just for your information that uh, the FIAPC is quite interested in such kind of events that was organized because we are thinking that organizers found the best title and uh, we will be happy to cooperate with organizers throughout the world to attract more and more investors, not only professionals but also direct clients to invest such kind of programs. And uh, yeah, if you have questions,
please ask, maybe outside, because I'm running out of time. Nice. That's right? Oh, we still have uh, time for questions. Great. So, uh, see, this is kind of a bit, let's say, economist academic approach. I am here not to attract to anyone. I'm here to share the knowledge. I'm here to, I can share these presentations with you as well. All the data are taken from publicly available resources. I didn't do the collection of data. These are available. I just put together. And uh, one thing is quite interesting for me is, tr again, try to understand how these governments in Europe set up this 500 or 400 or 300. If you have any ideas, uh, I would like to share. Because I have been talking about many. They said, that basically, yeah, we decided this way. I said, but you do not have any base to decide if this 300 is the best for your country or 400 is the best. I mean, no one is going to say you are guilty because you didn't put this one and to justify do that uh, in this way you lost some investors. And just to give an example of France, this is this advertisement. Huh? France is the only country in the world that gives you residency in France. If you pay, can you imagine the amount of money? You cannot, because it is 10 million euro compared to European neighbor countries that they are going to 300, 400, 500 maximum. In France, by law of 2009, we have, you can get a residency if you invest 10 million euro in this country. I mean, I couldn't find real justification why these guys decided to put 10 million and not, for example, 7.5. But actually, we are after this presentation, I mean, this presentation, I started the idea two years ago, and we started to talk about um, having decreased this amount in France with the president of National Association of uh, Realtors of France. He even presented the current president, Macron, who was at the time minister. He is aware of this stuff. But it was my idea just to push this issue to think about there should be some grants, there should be some institutions to study. The thing is that from another side, I mean, even if it is 10 million, you have an opportunity to invest with your two partners minimum. So everyone could invest 3.3 million. And now it's already a bit calm. No, no. The second thing is that if you really want to invest and get residency, you can still invest in France. You can even buy an apartment for two, 300,000 euro on the seafront around here, and apply for residency showing that you don't need any aid from France. You have enough money to live, and that would be enough to get residency here. Of course, without working permit. But I guess all these investors, they do not care about working here, right? So we are helping our clients to get this residency, although there is a law. France is kind of a bit, I mean, uh, ununderstandable. Still, for me, living in France already many years. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, please go. Yes. Yes, actually, uh, it happened about two days ago that the president of uh, France um, made some changes in taxation of the country and ta tax of wealth. What is important was cut, cut by 70%. If it makes some impact to uh, property or it's not connected with the real estate market at all? It is directly connected. Thank you for following these issues. It was one of the taxes that they built, I mean, they put additionally on millionaires to get that. If you have a lot of money, you are buying uh, more than 1.3 million euros, something that you have to share your uh, wealth with someone else. Then you have to pay additional uh, tax in France because we are a communist country, almost socialist. We are sharing everything. Uh, if you are happy, share your happiness with others. And uh, a lot of investors thought that this is mind-blowing idiotism. Sometimes they even, a few of them, decided to quit France residency for this reason. Because morally they thought that this is robbery. I mean, this is not normal. Uh, the idea is to cancel this tax or to decrease somehow. It's already a few years where we've been discussing. But the thing is that some of them are saying that uh, even we introduced this tax, it doesn't give us uh, much money be, uh, or on the other side because of this tax. The image of France became a very heavily taxed country. But if you compare the taxation in France with, for example, Spain or Italy, 
We are the third place. Even, just a simple example. If you are buying a property in France, the registration, the notary fees, as we call, is 7.5% only, compared to Spain, where it is sometimes more than 10%. No, but France is really highly, no, no, I mean that they have so much taxes. But when you are asking, could you compare with Italy or Belgium or Spain? I mean, what exactly? Oh, no, no, there are so many taxes there, no, I mean, the image is gone because of this tax. Now Macron is trying to attract rich guys saying that, see, I'm decreasing, you come back again. Basically, rich guys do not care about that decrease, to be honest. If you are buying a villa for 50 million, you don't care that much. Or if you are buying with uh, 2 million euro villa, there are some tricks how to escape legally this tax. You are getting credit mortgage loan from bank. You are putting 1.3 million, and the rest 700,000 you are getting from bank. You are not increasing this amount. You are not paying this tax. So in France, there are many, many solutions. But I really hope, again to your question, that this change will be advertised the way so that we will get back some investors that left the country or didn't want to invest because of this tax. But, but, but if it's connected with, uh, buy, uh, with buying luxury property or not, because as much as, uh, as, much as I remember, I it's, told you, it's, this it's, is it's, it's, it's 1,300,000 uh, property, it's already, uh, property owners already pay wealth tax. So actually, uh, and it was noted in um, local, uh, yes. in local, you know, newspapers and everywhere that it's not connected with some actives, uh, some maybe maybe it's connected with investment for business, but not for real estate. Or it is connected with real estate. Connected. It is connected with. So real actually, estate. if property is now uh, over million, over million, over 1.3 million, 1.3 million, ta wealth tax will be cut by 70 percent for taxation of the. See, not everything is straightforward. Just to say generally, yes, yes. But when you, there is a paragraph in the law, as in France grammar, you have 50,000 exceptions. Yeah. You will have tons of exceptions there. So if you want to have exact answer or an exact example, let me know. We'll discuss with our yeah, financial consultant and we'll it's get It's like there. always in taxation, it's, there is nothing white and black. There is always something gray. As in life. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question. Hi. I want to thank you. Great, great, great presentation. But I want to um, just mention a couple of things and ask you a question. In a more of a historical perspective, um, I, I, I see, I've seen over the last 25 years, and I assume you're also from Russia. You've seen I'm from Armenia. Armenia, okay. okay. Um, you know, in, in, um, I, I think there's a little bit of a trick being played, in all honesty, by many of the European countries with these temporary resident permits. Agreed. Um, and that they're trying to attract for temporary permits, uh, trying to attract investors. And many of the investors don't really understand that temporary means temporary. It doesn't mean permanent. I'll give you just an example that I think is, is really interesting. In the 90s, in between 99, 1994 and 1999, in the Czech Republic, um, the Czech government was offering passports, what they called, which were like in, in Russia, they were the internal passports. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't citizenship, and they allowed you to come and open up a company um, and get temporary residence. Um, the investment was minimal, and, um, and obviously it was taken advantage by, by many of the Russians. Um, you know, thousands of Russians moved to, to the Czech Republic. They opened up a company and, on paper, and nothing happened with it. Um, and then in 1999, the government kind of realized what, what happened, and said, uh oh, there's no, we're not really getting any economic activity out of this, and stopped, stopped renewing the permits. For me personally, as a Canadian immigration professional, I, I ended up going to Prague 20 times in 1999, 2000 to help the Russians who were about to get kicked out of Prague to move to Canada. It was a great time for me. But um, the same thing happened in Spain in the 90s as well. Lots of real estate purchases. Then the Spanish government got really unhappy with what was going on, and they closed it down, and everybody had to leave. And then 10 years later or 15 years later, the same thing started up. So I think that in term, those, those are things you need to look at, at what, whether the governments are really playing a, a game to temporarily attract people and by not giving them citizenship, 
or giving them permanency. They're just giving them something that they can get rid of them in a, in a, at any time. That's number one. Number two, in terms of the levels of um, of investment, I think you're looking for a scientific formula that doesn't exist. Um, the reason for the levels is competition and, and, and competition within the world. And that's it. It's very arbitrary. It's, it depends on the person in the government making the decision and that's it. I don't think that there's any, any system to it. Uh, lots of us uh, give advice to governments, but it's also based on what we think will be competitive and we see it you see the race to the bottom is happening both in these residence programs in citizenship programs because that's of all right. of the competition and and that signals a huge change in the movement the physical movement of of high net worth individuals in and out of both europe and and other countries and um and again i just want to say that and thank you for your presentation Thank you very much. Thank you. We have uh, actually the Canadian, Canadian example I have in another version of my presentation. So one day we will meet somewhere, I will share this. This is a brilliant example as, as well, Canadian immigration program. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for the presentation. I represent a Greek agency promoting the Golden Residence Program. Actually, we are the official investment promotion agency of Greece, promoting investments in general in Greece. So I would like to give you first one update of the data. Uh, according to the newest available data, we have already granted 2,100 residence uh, permits to investors uh, in real estate. The breakdown is almost the same. Almost the same. The third country now is Turkey instead of Egypt mm. that you showed in the data, and uh, we see a great uh, trend coming from Turkish investors. And the second thing that I would like to say, following up also the comment made by the gentleman before, is that the Greek uh, program gives a permanent residence permit, uh, which should be renewed every five years. And this is something that I saw on your comparison table. So it's not a five-year residence permit, it's a permanent one that as you do for your passport, you should renew it every five years, as long as you hold the, the real estate asset, of course. Understood. If you sell it, you lose the, the residence permit. In, uh, or if you, if you stay and hold the asset for five years, then you can apply for the, for the long-term uh, residency, which is a different story, of course. Thank you very much again, and see you in Athens. Thank you very much. And actually, we have partners working in Athens in real estate, and they are doing exactly the immigration, uh, the golden visa. And in December, in Athens, we are going to have the, the annual summit of FIAPC. They are, the guests are coming from 66 countries. We have already 500 attendants. It would be perfect to see all of you guys, if you will be around there, just to communicate, to share the knowledge, and try to cooperate. because. I think we have a lot to do while we are together, while we are sharing knowledge. This is the business that you cannot do sitting in your, uh, in your office. You should be sharing what you know, how to attract, learn, and communicate, and the result will be in one plus one is not two, but sometimes three or more. So welcome to Athens. It was just like that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be available even uh, after the presentation to answer to all your questions. But I don't want to be, yes. Yeah. Gun? Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. It was Wakag uh, Mafsiyan. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting presentation.